Is condensation endothermic or exothermic? So condensation, exothermic or endothermic. And with this, I say it depends, okay, of what they're referring to. Are they referring to when you have something sitting there and you see water molecules form on it or are they referring to when literally condensation like if we think of it when clouds form before precipitation I think that's called condensation where you have the water molecules gather and turn like the water vapor gather and turn into water and it fall down for precipitation okay the reason why I say depends is because it's very tricky in terms of what system you're referring to. Let's start with this. If the system you're referring to is the water itself, so water, okay, when you go from a gas to a liquid, which would be condensation, that shows a loss in energy, okay? And when you're losing energy, that means, well, hopefully, <laughs> you're expelling that energy which is what exothermic means. Exo is the release of energy. So water going from water vapor to water, okay, to water, mo well, liquid water, <laughs> um, this is a loss of energy, and that's why it's exothermic, okay? So that, is what I want to say there because the fact that if you think about it um, usually the shapes are changing because there is a um, less movement in them between the molecules the molecules are kind of close together okay which is why you get the changes from gas all the way to liquid to solid because the energy is going down so the molecules aren't moving so hazard haphazardly they're a lot more kind of close together allowing that um, intermolecular forces to really bond between them, making them more of a solid structure. So that's what they mean by exothermic. If we're saying the system was the bottle in this case, or some container, right, to where you would notice that um, water molecules, like, like condensation is happening on it, even like in things like, um, hmm, like when your glass is fog up, okay? When you enter, um, hmm, I'm trying to make sure I word this right. When you go from like a cold environment to a warm environment and your glass is fog up, okay? All right, what's happening there, all right, is that to simply put that object, so if you had like a plate, okay? and then you start seeing water molecules form on it, right? It's because the plate itself is absorbing energy from its surroundings. Because remember how water vapor turns into water is a loss of energy? That energy is going somewhere, okay? It's being absorbed by its surrounding. But in this case, the surrounding would be like um, my glasses, for example, when there starts condensation. Is because the glasses itself are absorbing energy, okay? And because it's absorbing energy, that water, that well, the water vapor surrounding it, it starts to condense onto my glasses because there's that energy difference. Like the water is, in a sense, the vapor in the air is giving the energy to the glasses. The glasses are absorbing it. And in this case, this scenario here, the system, if this was the glasses, okay? So the glasses are now the system instead of the water itself this is gaining energy and that would be endothermic okay a good way of thinking about it is like when you do your calorimetry um, type of things is that you notice is that if the temperature of the water which you increase that means the system inside of the water is exothermic because it's releasing water to its surroundings. And if the water temperature were to drop, 
as endothermic because now the system is absorbing energy from the surroundings. It's kind of like that, which is why when they refer to condensation, you have to really understand if they're talking about water being the system or something else being the system that they're referring to. Because when I think of condensation, I was thinking of something like condensation forming like on my glasses. But it could also be referring to condensation like when clouds form and then precipitation occurs. The clouds form and the precipitation occurs is an example of water losing energy to its surroundings because of the fact that you're getting water vapor and it's turning into water. And that also makes sense because as you go up in the atmosphere, it's colder. That atmosphere is going to be taking energy, absorbing heat from the water. So that's why it goes from water vapor to water. And in some colder places like Canada, for example, it goes further than that to where it starts snowing because the atmosphere up there is just so darn cold, it's going to absorb as much heat as possible. All right. So that's still going to be exothermic when condensation is referring to the water. When well, you're not talking to something that's not the water, so aka you see the water losing heat, whatever is there, whether it be the atmosphere, my glasses, you know, your water bottle, those things are ex endothermic because that's where the energy is being transferred to. Those things are absorbing the uh, energy from the water, hence why you get the condensation on the object itself. So, let's continue on. Condensation is a process where the water vapor turns into liquid water. That's true. The water vapor molecules come into contact with cooler molecules, and that's the key there. My glasses, okay, they were cold, you know, from wandering outside, and then when I get into a much warmer place, the glass is going to be absorbing heat from the surroundings, including the water vapor that might touch my glasses in the process, hence why you get the condensation on it. Okay, water vapor changes to liquid when energy is lost. Correct. Water vapor needs a physical site for condensation to occur. So you need a site of condensation, which is glasses, the atmosphere, etc. And then once the water vapor comes in contact with it, it can release heat and condense into water. Okay. Enthalpy refers to changes in heat. An exothermic process involves a negative change in enthalpy enthalpy or loss of heat or energy and the water vapor comes condensed into li liquid it loses that energy in the form of heat therefore condensation is an example of exothermic process but I'll still emphasize it's because it's referring to the water in this case and not the cooler surface that it touched okay so now question seven okay Thank you.